Hello everyone, good morning. It's really nice to see everyone here. My name is Soumya Dubey. I'm a customer success specialist for automation at Cisco. And I'm joined today by Kuhn Bastian. Hello, Kuhn. Who, as hey, many of morning. you would know, is the CX EMR VP. Well, what's been running on my mind for a while now, and I've discussed about that to a couple of folks here, is sustainability, innovation, and automation. And many of us here would have heard or spoken about why sustainability and understand the criticality of it in terms of environment and business. So the time to act is now, but how? Is the question that I've been thinking for a while now. With this, I would like to introduce you to the topic we discussed today. It's called sustainability in networking with automation. With this, I would like to hand it over to Kuhn. Kuhn, over to you. Thanks, Samia, and uh, to all of you, good morning and welcome. And as Nicholas Krell said, we do this in a hybrid way with Samia on stage and I'm sitting on telepresence. Although I think the boat ride of tonight will be not so hybrid, Samia will enjoy it. I will be sitting <laughs> over here. That's the limitation, of course, about uh, doing things hybrid. We could have called the title as well a bit more Applying Sustainability Principles and Energy Efficiency in Networking with and Applying Automation. <laughs> a full mouthful right but that's really what the topic is about and i see it for me as a, a marriage of two passions one something that is very close to my heart sustainability but i'm also an engineer at heart so passion about automation about engineering and when all of you hear conversations about sustainability about networking about automation it is always about the business case of opex it's always a business case about efficiency about speed about agility, about, about compliance, all those things. What we do today is probably even more important, is where we're going to combine and look at a different angle of how automation can contribute to energy efficiency, to sustainability. And definitely, as you all know, when the link is there with resource orchestration, of course, we can influence this one. But what we really would like to do with this today's session is spark spark challenge spark inspiration we would like to challenge you as a developer community to work with us on use cases on examples on sharing how we can tackle together one of the biggest challenge of mankind which is this energy transition so let me first talk a bit about what it is really we're talking about first of all i think most understand that the action or the urgency of actions uh, for climate and climate transition is absolutely crucial for us. And as the quote over here shows a bit, it is really top of mind of many companies. Our company, like yours, has probably taken very aggressive goals on greenhouse gas reduction of this one. And as you can see here, and also Chuck, as an example of our CEO, who joined the European Green Digital Coalition, which is a group of CEOs that really are driving this uh, uh, green and blue uh, uh, transition. Let's talk a bit about what we can, as a developer community, influence on energy efficiency. First of all, and depending on the source, the technology industry accounts more or less two to four percent of total global emission. That's not a small amount. And within that one, roughly one point to one point four points is related to, I would say, networking data transmission. Another one point is related to global data centers. And if you add crypto mining, it's actually nearly the same number. And depending on the source, we're talking roughly about probably one point is through 300 to 250 to 300 terawatt hours of energy, like a massive number. Right? If we as a community can reduce that a little bit, we can actually make a significant impact to this one. But moreover, studies have shown that by applying today's known digital solution, Think about digitization of industries of different sectors. We can actually help other companies to reduce their greenhouse gas emission. Actually, a study shows that with today's solution, we could even reduce today's emission by 15%. So we're not only talking about reduction of energy consumption of networking, we are also talking about how we can help accelerating digitization of other industries. Think about banking, 
think about uh, retail, think about car manufacturers, all of those things where we can do actually as a community, uh, building and helping the technology to roll out digitization more efficient. So we talk about two different parts of this one. Let's look at what Cisco does. First of all, Cisco has started with building sustainability in our culture, in everything we do. But we also voice that with our external statement on our commitment. As a company, we will be net zero across all scopes by 2040. And we will be net zero across scope one and scope two by 2025. Without going to too much detail, scope one and scope two is about energy we use, we consume, and the companies that are delivered those. Scope three is really everything. That includes also the energy that our equipment actually consumes. And that is where we will need your help. But let's cover a little bit of few items. First of all, we are well on the way to get our 2025 targets reached. We are today already operating 100% renewable energy in the US and quite a number of countries in Europe. And we're working to achieve that one. But we also started building circular economy principles in everything we do, from the design to the refresh problem to the recycling and so on. And if you talk about scope three, um, also within the design of our products, we start to take that really into core of what we do. An example is that our recent 8201 uh, router that building on the uh, Silicon One actually uses 96% less power than the previous generation and still has a 35% more bandwidth. So this is the part we contribute also to scope three. What we also do is that we want to engage all our employees. We want to get the brains of all our people, the proposals of all this. An example we launched some time ago, what we call the Green and Blue Innovation Challenge where employees could submit within teams IDs, which then would go to a competition and the winners would be funded. And guess what? Samia on stage was one of the members of the winning teams. So we're gonna hear our first story later on and I hope it inspires a lot. But before moving there, I would like to show a very simple quote. This was one of our architects who recently put that in a blog. And basically what it says as simple is, when you don't need a resource, switch it off. It doesn't consume energy. Of course, it's not as simple as our toddler on the image, right? Uh, first of all, <laughs> in networking, you have to do with high availability. Uh, what does it really mean when it's not used, right? Uh, how do you sense that? How do you get the data, this one? How do you reroute traffic? How do you apply things like in segment routing and so on? So all of those is where we want to challenge you as a community. But now I would like to give to Samia, who, like I said, was one of the winners of our Green and Blue Innovation Challenge. Samia, for you. Thank you, Kuhn. I love the analogy you shared here. This is very interesting. In fact, this is something I heard from my parents almost every day. And I've become so used to it that even today, when I left the hotel, I just wanted to switch off the light before I leave. So with this, uh, yes. Okay, so um, let me start this. So with this, I want to share an analogy very similar to what Kuhn said and how we can apply that in automation in our day-to-day -day networking life. Now, say for example, we have a network and our idea is to create a more energy efficient network. So let me take this as an example before I deep dive into the technical details of the solution we've been working on. This is an idea which kind of uh, got us into developing it further and so on. So say, for example, this is the network. The first step is we scan the network. The second is there's an analysis report which says there are unused ports in the network. Third, there is a recommendation which, based on a logic, suggests that there can be some interface, interfaces which can be switched on or off. Now, this sounds like a very simple thing, but it could be really powerful, especially in a data center sort of an infrastructure, where a lot of resources actually get wasted. Like, say, for example, if I'm using a VM for testing, uh, my code optimizes it, but I forget to switch it off. You know, and things like that. Line cards are open, ports are open. This really takes a lot of power, and we can take sustainability as a pillar in our architecture and consciously make those decisions. Now, coming back to this uh, infrastructure, as part of the same recommendation, there is a second recommendation which says that now we can apply a traffic policy to prioritize a single 
a particular link so that we choose a route which minimizes power consumption and maximizes uh, bandwidth of efficiency, okay? So we can do all of that, and then what we can do is, based on the recommendations we get, we can actually configure our devices or device list using automation. This impacts the power consumption, which also reduces the cost, so there are dollars saved. And then overall, the carbon impact of the infrastructure is reduced. With this, I would like to introduce you to the project that we have been working on. It's come out as part of the Green and Blue Challenge, where green means sustainability for environment, blue is technology. It's part of the, uh, one of the Cisco's Innovation Initiative Sprints, where I got a chance to work with some amazing people who are researching on sustainability, working on ML algorithms for the analytics, uh, waste management, and the whole uh, sustainability spectrum so that we reduce the scope two and three for our devices. Let me go into the technical details. So as you know, that sustainability is a really broad topic. There are a lot of aspects to consider in sustainability. So the first step when we started is we, we started wondering that what sort of data do we collect and how do we collect that data? So uh, on a very layman term, we decided to divide the data into three aspects. First, dynamic data, second, static, and third, solution. So dynamic data is the data that keeps changing. Say, for example, your um, temperature of the device, the current that is used, and so on. Static data is the data that is set by your manufacturers, like the manufacturing stats, the maximum power that can be taken from the wall, and so on. And solution data is the solution-based data. Say, for example, if you're using a SD-WAN, some uh, stats related to that, WebEx, stats related to that. Then we take all of that data and put it in the green box here, which is called SUSI. And the magic happens here. Well, so what happens here is, here is where we do the analytics. And the analytics results in two things. Number one, we have a sustainability score. Now, that score ranges from zero to one. Uh, one being the best score, and it is measured for the device and for the infrastructure. And second is the recommendation, which is actionable items, and again, that's given for the device and the infrastructure. Now, based on the recommendations, we can actually take those actionable items and apply it in the automation, uh, automation vision, right? So we can implement that using automation. This uh, one that you see is a snapshot from the SUSI dashboard. This is analyti uh, analytics done for a particular device. So if you see, there are a couple of stats which is given here, the SUSI score and so on. Let me give you a use case. Now let's say we have an ASR 1K sort of an infrastructure. And just to uh, you know, bring it down to a more simpler thing, let me do an analysis for the device, ASR 1001. And this is a report from that uh, analysis. Now, uh, this is a JSON, which can be, you know, it, we've created it in a way so that it can be plugged and played anywhere. So say, for example, if you want to consume this data in a visualization tool, you can do that. If you want to consume this data so that you implement, you can do that as well. There are three components here. First is the SUSI score, which for this particular device is 0.8. Second is recommendations. Now, there are two sorts of recommendations, if you see. There are a lot of text on the screen, so I'm just going to read it out. First is consolidate your ASR 1K devices to a higher version of ASR 1K. So what's happening here? We are reducing the number of devices, and we are shifting or migrating to a higher version of the device. Second is change the device, temperature, uh, sorry, device fan speed to 60% so that it impacts the temperature. Now, all of this can actually be uh, applied or implemented with automation, say even NSO. And then there is a recommendation priority, so which says, oh, this is highly recommended. Not so recommended, you know, you can defer it to a later time and so on. All right, so let's see what happens when we actually apply these recommendations. On the left-hand side is the device analysis before the recommendations were applied. And on the right-hand side, we have a, de a device analysis after the recommendations are applied. If you see in the graph, now the sustainability score is 0.96. What does it do? It impacts 
the power consumption, which is reduced by 92% and which impacts the CO2 emission, which is deducted by 87%. Now, these stats are on the environment level. If we see, this also impacts the solution because what I feel is that most of the times your solution efficiency is almost directly proportional to sustainability, at least in case of automation. So now what's happening here is we are shifting to a device which is more efficient and also more green. That means the triple R, reuse, recycle, reduce, and so on. This also impacts the business as now power consumption uh, is reduced, which means we are saving dollars. I've not calculated the exact amount because it will depend from region to region. With this, I would like to sus uh, summarize with a basic closed loop architecture. Again, our aim is to create an infrastructure which is efficient both in terms of solution and sustainability. So the first logical step in any automation vision, we collect the data and then we measure to analyze the data. After that, we send it to a prediction model which runs a learner agent so that we can also refer to certain sources outside and compare and learn. Then we send that to the recommendation engine which uh, runs certain logic and gives out the best possible solution which can be implemented. Now, depends on the kind of recommendation we have, we can send that to our automation engine to be implemented. And this cycle repeats. With this, I just want to say that for particularly our solution, there were a lot of iterations and POCs, a lot of lessons learned. And frankly, work, research, and improvements are still ongoing in the project. But I just want to highlight one thing that sustainability is a topic or is a challenge which is real. And I need all of your engineering brain power here to come together and come up with solutions for your network. Because this is a problem that affects us all and definitely needs to be solved. Thank you so much. And with this, I would hand it over to Kuhn. Thank you, Samia. Yeah, very, very inspirational. And by the way, congratulations again for winning the Innovation Challenge in Europe in uh, our company, right? But I hope it sparked passion, it sparked interest, and I hope this whole developer community actually wants to win an Innovation Challenge and a Sustainability Challenge. So with that one, we would like to invite you to interact with us, uh, whatever format, um, share, share uh, uh, interesting, uh, share interesting use cases, share inspirational examples, share innovation and so on. And for those of you who joined this afternoon workshop on driving sustainability with networking and automation, uh, please enjoy, please bring your best. And thanks a lot for joining all today. Thank you. I think I'm going to see you guys in the workshop if you yeah. guys are joining. See you there. Thank you. <laughs>